Well, hello, I'm your Jimora, and you're here in the mad monster cinema. <laughs> oh, and I'm so glad to have you here tonight. Tonight is a very special occasion. Now, as you know, we are in the middle of our mystery month. Um, you saw the show that we did last week with uh, Kay Kaiser and the wonderful film, You'll Find Out. <laughs> that, yes, it was called You'll Find Out. You, you'll find, you, you know what it was called, and I'm not playing that joke again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so that was a wonderful way to kick off our mystery month, was it not? I mean, music and comedy and fun, but you ain't seen nothing yet. No, tonight I'm bringing you a film from William Castle. Do you know who William Castle is? I'm sure you do. William Castle was, he was famous for all of his gimmicks. He did wonderful films and he used gimmicks such as um, uh, Emerjo and Illusiono. And all of these things were really cheap gimmicks, but they made the movies more fun. Now the movie that you're going to see tonight doesn't have a gimmick, but it is still a load of fun. The movie is called The Old Dark House. Now you may be familiar with the name. The Old Dark House was actually a film made in 1935, I think it was, with Boris Karloff. Um, a wonderful film, but it was more of a traditional horror film. This one is more of a comical reboot, uh, kind of like Airplane meets The Old Dark House. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know where I'm going with this. But anyway, uh, yes, it was produced and directed by William Castle, and it was a Hammer film. Now, at this time, uh, in the early 60s or mid-60s, Hammer was known for their fantastic horror films, Phantom of the Opera, their version of Dracula. They really were. Um, and they actually said that this was the oddest film they ever made. That's saying something. Anyway, and it wasn't taken very well by people when it first came out. They weren't very impressed with it. Uh, some people said that it just didn't do the original justice. Well, hell, it wasn't supposed to. It was supposed to be a comedy. So anyway, let's talk about who it stars. It stars Tom Poston. You remember him? Tom Poston? He was like um, the doorman on the Jeffersons. You remember him? He was also in Newhart. Yes, now I know you know who he is. Yes, it stars Tom Poston. And Tom Poston is this um, American who winds up having to deliver a car to Femme Hall. Uh, yes, I said Femme Hall. Femme. The family's name is Femme. F-E-M-M. -M. Yes. And he has to deliver a car for this gentleman to Femme Hall which, in actuality, is the same house that was used for the castle in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes, you'll see as the movie progresses. Anyway, he goes to this big creaky house. There's a bunch of weird people living in this, kind of like the Adams Family in a way. And one of the people who live in this house is Penella Fielding. Penella Fielding, absolutely wonderful actress. She always talked with such diction. Everything that she did. Oh, I love her. I do. She was famous for a lot of films. She also played in another comical horror film called Carry On Screaming, which I hope to show later on this month. Maybe. Or maybe next month. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and kick off into tonight's fantastic production. I'm so excited. I am so excited. Uh, oh, wait, no. Before we do, before we do, we have a few things that we must say. First of all, Special thanks to all of my Patreons. Um, those are my producers. Thank you for everything that you do. And if you're not a Patreon, go over to my Patreon page. You'll see the link here. Go over to the Patreon page. It's only $5 a month and you can be a producer. You can help me do my show and your name goes to the end of the credit. Plus, you get lots of free stuff. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, we have a big live drag show coming up at the end of this month called the Zoom Room Cabaret with me, Jessica Valentine, and Gladys Faye Mortem. You're going to want to see that, but you've got to be a member of the Patreon in order to see that. Also, do you like my jewelry? Yes, you know where I'm going with this. 
paparazzi jewelry. These earrings were only $5. You need to go over and see Cameron over on Facebook. Uh, you'll see his link here. Go visit Cameron over at Facebook and he'll get you set up for your jewelry. Only $5, the most I'll ever pay is $25, and I paid that for this necklace. Fantastic. Cameron and uh, Jimmy James, they are my jewelry consultants. All I wear is paparazzi, so you need to go over there and take a look at that. All right, let's go ahead and jump into tonight's show. I'm so excited. Tonight's presentation of The Old Dark House. Can I help you, sir? Oh, oh, no, thanks. I'm just going into the gambling room. I'm afraid not. Not? I take it you're not a member of this establishment, sir? Uh, no, no, I'm not. But I have a friend who is. They always have. Well, he's not a friend, exactly. Uh, I mean, we share an apartment. That is, he uses it in the daytime, and I use it at night. How cozy. Yeah, well, he asked me to get something for him, and I've got it here, and I just want to give it to him. If you'll leave it with me, sir, I'll make quite sure that he gets it. I can. No. Oh. Mm. It's a car. It's outside. My gosh, the thing stretches from... Uh, well, what name? Pendrel. Tom. M. N. O. P. P. A. No, 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 not, not, uh, not Penderel. Not Pendrel. No, oh, that's me. I mean, my name is... I'm Pendrel. Tom Pendrel. His name is Fem. F. D-E-F. Fabian Phillips. Hmm. That is a Mr. Fem. Yes, I know. Casper Fem. He's my friend. Well, not a friend exactly. You see, he put this ad in the Times. Someone to share a flat. I answered the ad. It wasn't please, a day before... Please, please. You go straight in. Oh, thanks. But no gambling, you understand? Oh, not me. I'm American. Yeah. Come on. I'll talk to you. 
Banco. Banco. Banco Ofenda. Ah, Mr. Fem. Casper, there you are again, just like always. Hello, Thomas Deboy. Nice of you to drop in and bring me luck. No, no, I brought you the car. The one you bought for me. It's a beauty, a beauty. And it's American? Oh, yes, American all the way. I've always wanted a foreign car. <laughs> and this is the best. I never represent an inferior product. Banco de quatre mille. Suivit. Suivit. How much is that? Just a few pounds. It's four thousand to be exact. Four thousand? Why, that's twelve thousand dollars. No fill a banco. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll pass now. Thank you so much. Fancy all this money for me. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, uh, Casper, um, I'm sorry you lost. You did bring me luck. Bad. Sorry. That's all right. Does it really have 300 horsepower? More. It's outside, it's all yours, and it's ready to go. Ready to go? Yes, I'm almost ready. Thomas, come with me. I must have a private word with you. Thomas, you've been sharing my flat now for a month. Have things been satisfactory? Well, sure, Casper. I mean, you're always gone at night, and I sell cars all day. Exactly. Exactly? Yes. Don't you think it's a strange arrangement? Strange? Thomas, what do you do at night when I'm not there? Do? Casper, I sleep. Oh, well, sometimes I go out with a girl. Dining, clubs, movies. I like movies. And girl. Your nights sound wonderful. Casper, what do you do at night? I mean, where do you go? What do you do? I go back. Back? Back there. Like where? I'm already late now. Thomas, you're my friend. My only friend. I need your help. Anything I can do? Every night while you're... you're living. I go back to Firm Hall. And that's where it's going to happen. Casper, what's going to happen? Something I'm afraid of. Humpty Dumpty sat in the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. What? They delivered a coffin today. Who? It's almost time. Thomas, you must come down to Femme Hall. I can explain everything there. Femme Hall? Where's that? Dartmoor. Dartmoor? It's my ancestral home. Dartmoor? It's a lovely drive. And you can spend the weekend with me. And that way you'll meet my cousin. She'll like you. You're likable. Am I? And you'll drive my new car down right away. Well, you will say yes, won't you? Well, I... It's a beautiful house, long, rambling, all the conveniences. And my cousin, she's beautiful also. She is, huh? How many carburetors? Your cousin? No, my car. Uh, oh, two, two. She's just as lovely as Pam Hall. Your car? No, my cousin. And what she needs is someone like you, new blood, that sort of thing, especially just now. Oh, Thomas, you must come. I'm frightened. I need your help. Casper, you're my friend. Of course I'll come. Thank you. Oh, it's late. It's very late. I must fly. Well, if you're ready to leave, let's go. No, when I say fly, I mean literally by airplane. I rent one. It's much faster. But, Casper, why don't you drive down with me? Don't forget, you brought me bad luck. Huh? See you. Drive carefully now. Uh...
Someone there? Oh. If you are there, come up. I'm not coming out. I'm coming out. Stop. Who are you? Casper. Is that you, Mr. Femme? Yes. I'm Mr. Femme, but I don't know you. Hands up. Keep coming. Oh, you. You're not Casper. No. Are you a friend of his? Yeah, yes, I am. He invited me down here. Honest, he did. Uh, you see, I share a flat with Casper. Well, I, I mean, he lives in the daytime and I live at night. I see. My name is Potiphar Femme. I'm Casper's uncle. Perhaps, Mr. Pendrell, you had better come with me. I must apologize, Mr. Pendrell, for your abrupt entrance. You see, it, it's an old house, old and dark. Yes, I see. Yeah. You know, I potter sometimes. The trap door at the entrance hasn't worked right for a hundred years. Used once to discourage visitors. I fixed it, you see. Works very well now, doesn't it? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, yes. yes. Ooh, next time, don't use the knocker. Ring the bell. Yes, I will. I wonder what I'm going to say to Casper. Whatever you wish, Mr. Pendrel. No, you don't understand. You see, something terrible happened. Yes, it was terrible. Oh, you heard, you know? Of course, a frightful crash. No, I didn't mean for it to happen. I don't even know how it happened. I guess it was all that rain. Oh, 40 days and 40 nights. Rain came. Beg your pardon? Casters in here. Ah. Yes, I understand. A shock. He fell just an hour ago, all the way from the top of the landing. He was very broken. But, but... Yes, I know how you must feel. Last respects. Well, uh... I leave you alone with him. He's been expecting you. No, 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 please. Mr. Padov! I'm sorry I brought you bad luck. It was a beautiful car. It wasn't my fault. Really, it wasn't. All I did was push against the gate. Just a little bit. Excuse me. 
But it was insured. I mean, you won't have to worry about that. Well, naturally, you won't, you won't have to. I mean, I wish someone would shut your eyes. you'd left. No, no, I mean, I heard you crying. Yes, I've, I've been sitting over there. It seems so long now since we brought him here. You're a friend of Gaspers. Yes, I, I, I was his friend. Well, I mean, well, I sell cars. I mean, I, I, I sold him a car. He advertised for a roommate and I moved in with him. You must be his cousin. I'm Cecily Fair. I'm Tom Penderell. You're American. Yeah, how'd you know? Gasper said he'd met an American in London. I guessed you must be him. You're very brave to come here. I am? He didn't fall, you know. Somebody did this to him. Yes, he told me he was in danger. Did he? What else did he tell you? Just that he needed my help. He doesn't need it now. No. Mr. Pendrell, if you are who you think you are and who I think you are, you mustn't stay here another moment. Something terrible is happening here. You've got to leave before the others find out. The others? Others. The family. You must leave while there's still time. Well, what about you? Oh, please hurry before he gets back. No, uh, not without you. Miss Fem Casper wanted me to meet you. That's why I'm here. No, I'm afraid. Of me? Oh, no. Mr. Pendrell, you have a car. Get in it and drive away. No, it's a wreck. I pushed against the gate and something fell on it and the whole front is smashed. Well, then you it. must walk, Mr. Pendrell. This is your last chance. You must leave before he gets back. I don't understand. I don't Yes. It didn't take me long. Hey, how about that? We make our own electricity here. I've been repairing the generator, the storm. I did it. Who is this? Oh, may I present my Uncle Roderick Fenn? This is Mr. Tom Pendrell. He was a friend of Casper's. Really? Casper had some very strange friends. Were you one of them? No, I'm not strange. I'm American. From America. It couldn't be. No. You'll be hungry. We'll be having dinner soon. Well... Oh, well, Mr. Pendrell feels he really must leave Fem Hall now. He really must. Oh, no, no. Good gracious, no. I wouldn't hear of it. Couldn't possibly let you go now, Mr. Pendrell. You know, it's not every day that we have an American for dinner. Such a treat for us all. I'm sure the others will be delighted. The others? The others. Hello. May I introduce a friend of Casper's, Mr. Pendrell? Oh, I'm Casper's mother, Mr. Pendrell. Such a surprise to find he had a friend. We're having you for dinner. <laughs> Delicious. There isn't much time left, Mr. Pendrell. There isn't much time. There isn't? <laughs> Welcome. 
This is Morgana. Morgana, this is Mr. Pendrell. Uh, how do you do? I'll do better. Now that you're here. You will? I'm sure she will. Shall we have dinner, Uncle Roderick? Yes, I think we could start. Enjoying your food, dear visitor? I have the cooked it. It was Casper's favorite. He's not like the other one. The other one only eats raw things. Another one? Another two, but let's not talk about it now. Back to work, back to work. The time is almost at hand. You'll be at the gathering, Potiphar. Naturally, naturally. Mustn't miss that. I want to hear about you, Mr. Penn. What you do and what it's like. Like? Yes. Out there. Outside. Well, uh... Enough of that talk, Morgana. Sometimes you behave as if you wanted to leave Fem Hall. You don't want to leave, do you? No. No. No, Roderick. Well, then. You mean you like it here? <laughs> I mean, you like all this? Well, maybe I didn't put it the right way. Uh... Oh, but you have, Mr. Pendrell. Very frank of you. Quite American. What Uncle Roderick means is that you're quite right. I am? It's not that we want to stay at Fem Hall, Mr. Pendrell. It's just that we must. <laughs> we must. Exactly. We have to stay. A delicious meal, Agatha. Perhaps I could explain, Mr. Pendrell. You might be interested in the secrets of an old house. You coming along, Agatha? No, I think I'll just go and knit somewhere. This old, dark house, you know, has stood like a fortress through generations of them, built to withstand flood, tempest, war, and strife. All the respect and wishes of my great-great-grandfather, Morgan Penn. You heard of him, of course? The pirate. Morgan. The Morgan the pirate? Precisely. Here he is. Morgan Penn the father. The founder of our little family. Such a lovely creature. You're lovely. I still don't understand why you must all live here. Quite simple. Before they hanged him, you see, Morgan repented. They hanged him just the same, naturally. All the arrangements had been made. They gave him time to make a will. In order to prevent any member of the family ever again flying the pirate flag, he had this fortress built right here in the middle of the marsh, as far away from the sea as possible. His descendants only inherit the fortune, as long as they reside in the house. But living here is a problem, Mr. Pendrell, a great problem. You see, there were provisions in the will. Clause one. Any member of the family refusing to live here loses all rights to the fortune. Two. That any member of the family who is not home by midnight every night loses all right to inheritance. Three. That the femme fortune, all of it, is left to the house that the will can never be changed unless the house dies. Only then can the fortune be divided among the remaining survivors. Well, how can a house die? Did you ever try burning it? I did once. You can't burn solid rock. So what do you use for money? I mean, how do you live? Once a year, we divide the interest of the capital. On the anniversary of great-great-grandfather's reign. 
Perhaps you knew about that already. How would I know about the will? Anything strike you, Mr. Pendrell? Same nose, same mouth, same hairline? Yes, I do see the resemblance. Of course, you're fuller in the face than he is. The resemblance isn't to me. It's to you. I don't think I told you Morgan had a daughter. She ran away with another pilot before the will was made. An American pilot. If she'd had children, and she probably did have, in which case, of course, her heirs would stand to inherit a substantial portion of the fortune. You are American, aren't you, Mr. Pendrell? You sail at all? Now, listen. Just because you think I look like your great, great, like him, you surely don't think I'm one of you. Oh, I hope not. That would be most unfortunate for all of us. You say your name is Pendrell. Her pilot's name was Blackbeard. Of course, that wasn't his full name, you understand. It could easily have been Blackbeard Pendrell. Not very likely, but then you must admit it's rather a coincidence. You're coming here tonight, of all nights. What's so special about tonight? Tonight is the anniversary of great-great-grandfather's hanging. Come sit down, to set on a wall. Come sit down, they had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Casper Fenn together again. It's Casper! No, it couldn't be. It must be the other. No, it's Casper. A mother hen knows her chick. Four, six, the bank wins. Gay go up and gay go down. Ring the Casper. bells of London it town. It is. Oranges and lemons. Oranges and lemons. Oranges and lemons. Oranges and lemons. Why? It's just a tape. A tape, Mr. Pendrell? Yes, his voice on a tape machine. Oh, how very ingenious. It was, Casper. I know it was. <laughs> And we're back. Oh, did I not tell you? Isn't this wonderful? I mean, it's got that kind of ghost and Mr. Chicken sort of vibe to it, which I love. I mean, oh, I absolutely love the ghost and Mr. Chicken too. That's another one I need to show. But anyway, now that we're at intermission, let's talk a little bit more about the producer and director of this film, William Castle. All right. You know, William Castle was, as I said at the beginning, very famous for his gimmicks. Um, some of his most famous films were um, 13 Ghosts. Have you ever seen that one? 13 Ghosts had a, a gimmick called Illusiono, where you had these little cardboard glasses that looked like 3D glasses, but the movie wasn't in 3D. Uh, it had a blue lens and had an orange lens. If you were too scared and you didn't want to see the ghosts, you looked through the orange lens and the ghosts would disappear. You wouldn't be able to see them. But if you wanted to see the ghost, you look through the blue lens, and then you could see the ghosts on the screen. It was a really an ingenious idea, but it gave the theater goers a headache. They're kind of go, and then, it was, a, it was a mess. But anyway, it brought more people to the theater. Then of course he did The Tingler with Vincent Price. That one was wonderful. And that one, um, that was the one that had uh, Emerjo. No, Emerjo with House on Haunted. He had so many damn different ones, and they all sounded the same. Um, and let me talk about House on Haunted Hill, which also had been surprised. Then we'll come back to the Tingler. House on Haunted Hill had Emerjo. Emerjo was a plastic skeleton that was on a like a clothesline over the audience. And at the end of the movie, when the skeleton comes up out of the vat and Vincent Price is using it like a marionette, the projectionist would pull a rope and the little skeleton would come across the heads of the people in the audience. The problem was every now and then, or most of the time, I should say, it would get stuck halfway across and it would just kind of sit there swinging back and forth in the air conditioning. So it, it didn't work too well anyway it was another cheap effect and it went on like that he had insurance policies and a nurse out in the lobby to make sure that you didn't die of fright when watching um oh homicidal oh yes and that one had the shock clock 
um, where it was a clock on the screen. It would tell you what time the scary stuff was about to happen. He was the king of these things. And then, of course, in The Tingler, you know what, I'm not even real sure what the effect was called in The Tingler. Um, I know most of you out there do, but it was a, a vibrator, a buzzer up under the seat. And then the projectionist would push a button and it would go, eh, and it would make the seat vibrate. And the whole audience would go into absolute hysterics. And that one also had been surprise, So, you know, that kind of added to the effect. So anyway, William Castle was the king of these gimmicks. And it is also said he was also the great grandfather of our modern day haunted attraction. Why, you ask? Let me tell you. Back then, they didn't have haunted houses. So, people would go to these things called late-night spook shows. A spook show is where people would dress up in Halloween costumes, and they would do like a magic show on the stage. They would have a blackout seance where ghosts would fly over the heads of everybody in the audience. And it was a lot of fun. Um, but that was the closest thing you could get to a Halloween haunted house. Hmm. Nowadays, they're everywhere at Halloween and even year-round. So, William Castle was a really big name and a really big contributor to the haunted attraction industry and, of course, to the motion picture industry. All right, before we go back in to see the rest of tonight's feature, I want to remind you about paparazzi. Don't forget, paparazzi jewelry. Only $5. The most you'll ever pay is $25. You can go visit Cameron over here at Facebook. Cameron and Jane, Cameron over at Facebook and Jimmy James at Facebook, they are my jewelry consultants. All of my jewelry I get from them. They keep me in the best jewelry for the most affordable prices. Paparazzi jewelry. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump back in and watch the conclusion of tonight's feature, The Old Dark House. Well, that's all right. I can <laughs> Come on, let me. Oh, thank you. That's all right. I, I can do it. Thank you. Anyway. That's, 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 yeah. That's, 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 I'll just roll up my sleeves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's John. Oh, I exercise. I'm sure you do. Every morning. I got out there and I think he's, uh, he's in the army. <laughs> you, um, well, you must be very lonely here. Well, I mean, uh, all alone. Oh, you have no idea. Oh, Every night in the house, just a whole family of friends. Well, you, uh, don't you have any boyfriends? Stupid. Oh no, they they were all from the village. I always had to be home by twelve o'clock. Well, things were just getting started. I had to stop. Mm. Mm. Oh, Excuse me. Damp. Oh, yeah, the rain. <laughs> Let me press them for you. My pants? Mm. Oh, give them to me. Oh, <laughs> yes, I. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you come to them? Oh, oh, well, I, Casper invited me. He wanted me to meet his cousin. His cousin? Yeah, Cecily. Casper was my cousin, too. Oh, really? How do you do? Oh, Daddy, it's no 
what you think. He's not like the other boys. He's not after our money. Daddy never liked any of my boyfriends. He's so suspicious. You spoil everything. I like talk. Charming family. Said about the car. I'm sorry if I, or because I brought you bad luck. Well, I tried to get here to help you. Honestly, I did, but I was too late. Look, it was a beautiful car. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll fix it all up, like new, and you can take it with you. I must tell you something. Yes, yes. How they killed you, and now they're trying to kill me. See? Acid. He won't stop at anything. You, you're alive. Please, I'm a gentleman. But you're dead. Not a bit, not a bit. Casper, you're dead. Casper's dead. I'm not. I'm Jasper, Fem. Casper was my twin. Didn't they tell you about Casper and Jasper? No. Humpty and Dumpty, Mother used to call us. Now there's just Dumpty left. Me. You mean you're next? Yes, that's why I've been hiding. But who killed your brother? Uncle Roderick. Uncle, Uncle Roderick? If he can kill us all off, he'll have all the fem money. You see, he doesn't mind living at fem hall. He likes it here. You think he put that acid in my room? Come on, Dumpty. <laughs> Jasper, we're going to confront your Uncle Roderick with some strong evidence.
right over here. I'll show you proof. May I? See, I was... Well, that's better. I was just going to wash my hands, and when I leaned over to get the soap, my tie fell in the water, just like that. When I pulled it out, the tie was gone. It had been eaten away. It's all wet. Wet? Well, look at this one. No, no, no! Water. Wet. It's just water. Water? But there was acid. Somebody... If you don't mind my asking you, who are you? I'm Tom Penderell from America, and I hate the sea. Well, that's all right, then. What's the time? I can't be late. Late? Uh, plenty of time. Be careful, my friend. Dear. I'm not Casper. I'm Jasper. Oh, you are so alike. Or you were. Mother, we were twins. Of course. I remember. Mother, I'm so terribly afraid. Is that why you keep hiding? Now, you must have regular meals. You've got to keep up your strength. I can't eat. I'm too frightened. Well, that's all the more reason, because it's not good to be frightened on an empty tummy. No, Mother. Now, promise me, you'll come in and have your meals regularly. A good boy. And then you can run away and, you know, hide as much as you like. What are you frightened of? Uncle Roderick, he's going to kill me. Oh, nonsense, dear. You're talking nonsense. He's much too nice. And he's very fond of you, I know. He's going to kill us all. Jasper, you're not being very kind. You as well. Oh, your uncle would never think of doing a thing like that. Hello, Roderick. We're just talking about you. Oh, hello, Uncle. There you are. The sea with the gathering. Agatha, have you seen the acid I used to clean my gun? No, dear, should I? Where did you leave it? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Agatha, you haven't. No, you couldn't. Have you? I know what you're thinking, and the answer's no. Oh. Yes, I think it is. You feel all right, don't you? Perfectly. Well, um... Is this for me? No, it's not for anyone. Just my way of expressing myself. You see, um, these were good days. These were bad days. This was a particularly beastly day. Agatha, I believe you'll go on knitting right to the grave. There are happier ways of expressing that kind of thing under the circumstances, but of course you are quite right. It's been a great solace to me through everything. Today I lost my earrings. The day we lost Mother, the war, the house, the drains, my poor Humpty, and this rain goes on as if it never wanted to stop. So I just keep on knitting, and you have your guns, don't you? True. But you haven't been using them lately, have you? Is something wrong? No. Perhaps there just isn't anything very nice to shoot at. I have a feeling there's going to be quite soon. Oh, good. Well, nearly time. You coming along? No, dear. I'll just get to the end of the row. You won't be late, will you? Of course not, silly. <laughs> so good of you to be present after your harrowing experience. <laughs> Thanks for the tie. It was Casper's. Oh. There was acid, Mr. Femme. For you, Mr. Pendrel, or for one of us? Well, the basin was switched. You might have switched it, Uncle Roderick. Nonsense. I hope you don't leave us, Tom. I do like you. And I hope Mr. Pendrell will remember that it was you, Morgana, who brought him his basin. It was already filled and waiting when I picked it up. 
I'm glad I didn't ask for a bath. Not late. Not late. Not a bit. How are you, Mr. Pendrell? It's almost time. Time? Not yet, Roger. But soon. Very soon. This is my brother, Morgan Fem. Yeah, I've already had the pleasure. He hasn't spoken to any of us for 15 years. He eats alone in his room. He doesn't shave very well. I don't think he likes us. Well, everyone's here but Aunt Agatha. Agatha is never late. No one is ever late. Mother knows what being late would mean. Mother, hurry up, it's almost time. Agatha has exactly seven seconds. Agatha, no time to play games. Agatha. Time? No, no, that clock's always fast. That's fast, too. St. Giles. Time? Agatha isn't present. Therefore, under the rules of the will, she forfeits her share. You hear that, Morgana? You hear that, Cecily? She forfeits? She forfeits? Mother never spent her money on anything but wool. She hoarded every penny. And now it'll come to us. Agatha forfeits! Agatha forfeits! How can you be so mercenary? Are you going to turn down your share? No. She can't have gone far. We should really try to find her. Look! so carefully. Two sticks and an apple Say the bells of Whitechapel There's nothing else on it. Did you play the whole thing? It was you. You killed her. You have always wanted more than your share to feed that nasty vice of yours. Your gun collection. Gun collecting a nasty vice? You and your beastly potted barbs? Your insipid, ridiculous orchid? Oh, please, stop it! Tom, please, would you help us? What should we do? One of us is a murderer. What can we do? Call the police. All the lines are down. I'll be very glad to go. None of us can leave now. Even you might be guilty. Me? Why not you? Yes, why not you? How do we know you really were invited here? Why, Casper asked me. You said you were Casper's friend. He never said anything about you. Well, we were living in the same flat. I mean, he had it in the daytime and I had it at night. That sounds most peculiar. Yeah, I guess it does. You can't expect us to believe that. Casper never made friends easily. Besides, there's that uncanny resemblance between you and our great, great, great... Now, wait a minute. You're trying to shift the blame, Mr. Fem. I wasn't even in the house when Casper fell. What's more, you're the one who stands to gain by killing off your family. Well, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going for the police. Oh, Tom, don't. Oh, don't be silly. Tom, please, don't be hasty. Don't go. Mr. Pendrell, the nearest house is five miles away. You'll never make it. Somebody's got to do something, and I'm going to do it. I wouldn't. Wait. No. You can't stop me. I'm going to get the police. <laughs> oh. 
lost you, Mr. Pendrel. That would have been most unfortunate. I'm going for the police and nobody's going to stop. Oh. Mm. oh, my poor Tom. My fault, Mr. Pendrel. Entirely my fault. I'm completely responsible. I should have worked out a way to close the trap door once someone got it open. I'm sorry I had to be so abrupt with you just now, but we can't be too careful. First thing in the morning, we'll send for the police. First thing in the morning. Promise. And now you ought to get a good night's rest. If you need anything, we'll be downstairs. Come along, everybody. <laughs> Morgana. No idea what living here is like. All I can remember since I was a child is being locked in at night, never able to leave. It's like living in a tomb. Does the money mean that much to you? Not anymore. I've seen what it's done to the others. I watched normal people slowly change, twisted by this house. You talk of this house as if it were a person. It is. Oh, you don't believe that, Cecily? Houses aren't alive. Not only alive, but evil. Still, there's no need to worry. My family is here. That's reassuring. Oh, that's Uncle Morgan. Tom, he's furious you're here. He thinks you're going to take away Morgana. He, he might become dangerous. Again. What do you mean, again? The last young man that came here tried to take Morgana away. Yeah, what happened? No, no, don't tell me. We heard screams in the night, and then... Well, he never was found. You'd better get some rest. You think you'll be able to sleep? Yeah, I'll count corpses. such beautiful hair. Why do you wear it in a crew cut? Hmm? one of the family is she. She isn't related. 
Oh, I see what you mean, Mr. Pendrel. Very amusing. What's a hyena doing in this house? Penelope is one of a pair, Mr. Pendrel. One of many. You mean there are more? Many more. You collect hyenas? That's silly, Mr. Pendra. I have hyenas because the world is coming to an end. Oh, well, that explains it. Then. You're just as batty as the rest of them. Nonsense. I've calculated it to the instant. You hear that? It's just the beginning. The beginning of what? Pick up that book, Mr. Pendra. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Why, it's a... Uh, of course. Turn to Genesis 7, 17 and 18. Genesis 7. Now read it to me. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went, went upon, upon the, the face, face of the, the waters. Water. You see, just like it was before. And the ark went. You mean you've made. Where is it? Look! There. Nights the rains came. It started again now. How do you know it'll float? We Fems are shipbuilders. When the end comes, the ark will be ready. Well, there, there, Benjamin. No noise now. We'll soon be away. Excuse me, will they? Come, I have something else to show you. Something else. I can hardly wait. <laughs> the man who has everything, eh? Mine. Mr. Pendrel, you see there's just one animal missing. Me? Eh? A pair of people to repopulate the earth. People? But Cecily and I, we're not even engaged. Cecily? Who said Cecily? No, I mean Morgana. A woman warm, vibrant. Uh, you mean oh, Morgana? Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no. I'm Absolutely. Not. A perfect mate for you. A mother for a new race of families. Yes, yes. That's just what the world needs. There, you see? It's beginning to rise. It looks like it's sinking. I must go topside. My charts, my sextant. You and Morgana would be very comfortable there when we say. Well, I. Listen. Hey, what is there? just as batty as the rest of them. Uh, I'm not mating with Morgana. Honest, I'm not. That was just one of Uncle Potiphar's jokes. Really, Morgana? Uh, she doesn't even like me. Honest, she doesn't. I'm not her type. She likes strong, silent men with beards. I shave. Look. Potiphar! Excuse me, 
Disappear to disappear? I did no such thing. I came back here for my chance. What's the rule? Really, you mustn't catch cold. Excuse me. I'll mull you a wine. Just the thing. All my animals must have perfect health. Uh, eating better? Oh yes. Look, Roderick. Just because you pulled me out of that mud doesn't mean I've crossed you off the list. You could still be the one who's doing all this. Of course I could. So could you. That's why I'm keeping this, and I mean to use it. I'm going to guard the door. I want to be quite sure that no one enters or leaves. Say, listen, Roderick. Where are the others? Cecily is in the kitchen preparing a snack. You mean after all this, she's hungry? No, I am. Organa's in her room drying your clothes. Jasper's in the study. You can stay with him. Here we are, Mr. Pendrell. Oh, thank you. Is that an American custom? Mm -hmm. Does it make the wine taste better? Yes, I'll make one for myself. 
Keep an eye on this young man, Roderick. I have great plans for him. In the study. March. All right, all right. something I want to ask you. I'm glad we're alone. Who do you think is really doing all this? Huh? Well, you don't want to talk. Well, I don't blame you. It is your own family. I think it's Roderick. Oh, it's getting cold in here. Oh, it really is chilly. Have you seen the fire tongs, Jasper? Pokers and tongs say the bells of St. John. What did you say, Jasper? What did you say? Jasper! chilly and uh, I went to get the fire tongs and and uh, I didn't see them here and there they were around Jasper's neck and they still are you were the only one who was with him Tom tell him the truth but he was dead the whole time I was in the room that's right I felt him quite cold there you see Uncle Roderick Tom didn't do it until we know which of us is the murderer, we will all go to our rooms, lock ourselves in, and bolt the door. Roderick, what good is that going to do? It'll keep us alive, Mr. Penderell. But you... Do as you're told. Shall we go? Yes, Roderick. March. <laughs> Upstairs to lock ourselves in. Oh, good. Oh, now you will all go to your room. Potiphar, Cecily, Morgana. Uncle Roderick, don't you think Tom would be safer in my room? No. Night, Tom. No, in here, but I can keep an eye on him. Oh, just a clock. Good night. My little collection, Mr. Penderell. Nothing like being safe. Gun collecting is my hobby, you know. When one doesn't go out much, one needs diversion. All we Fems have our hobbies. Casper Gamble. <laughs> Jasper had his orchid. <laughs> Agatha, her knitting. Potiphar has been building his ark for 20 years. Have you got a hobby, Mr. Penderell? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. My, uh, no, sir, I don't have a hobby, no. Pity. Well, all we can do now is to wait. Wait for the murderer to show himself. Only four bullets. Now you tell me. Guns are my world, you know. My real world. This one was used to assassinate the Archduke of Hungary. 
This one belonged to Harkness, the Bluebeard. He killed four of his wives with it. <laughs> this cannon is credited with the sinking of the U.S. Victorine. All hands lost. And this is my piece de resistance. This gun was used by Napoleon himself to kill... Cecily. I don't know, Tom. Cecily! 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 Every time someone's been murdered, this thing plays. But it must be a new recording. I pulled out the first one after Casper was killed. Bullseyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret's. Unless... Unless Casper is still alive. Say it. Say it. The rhyme. Bullseyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret's. Bullseyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret's. Wait a minute. Bullseyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret's. Bullseyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret's. It was recorded at normal speed and played back slow. Yes, Tom, it's my voice. No, 
There's nothing you can do. Now, would you like to hear the end of the rhyme? The final part? When will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey? When I grow rich, say the bells of Shoreditch. Pray, when will that be, say the bells of Stepney? Soon now I know, since the great bell of Bow. No, don't know. Here comes a candle to light you to bed. And here comes a chopper to chop off your head. No, Cecily, don't. I'm going to kill Morgana just as I killed the others. Just as I'm going to kill this house. Five minutes. This house and everyone in it will be dead. Come with me, Tom. We'll be rich. You're mad. Bill, stay! <laughs> Another key? Where is it? Potiphar. He's got all the keys of the house. Potiphar. I'll find him and get the... Aha. In five minutes, this house and everyone in it will be dead. What did she mean? Tom, just get me out of here. Four minutes left. She's going to destroy the house, but how? How? There's a pattern for murder. The rhymes, the bells, the clocks, the tape recorder. Those clocks. Dynamite. Morgana, how many clocks are there in the house? Clocks? How can you talk about clocks? How many, Morgana? Oh, lots. Tom, get me out of here. No, not lots. The number. Number? Tom, what are you talking We've about? We've got four minutes, Morgana. How many clocks? Six or seven. Well, six or seven. Seven. But please don't shout. All right, all right. Which one strikes first? Hmm? Which one? Study. Tom! You stay right where you are. Don't you move. Why, that's 
me. Where next? Morgana, where next? There are still two clocks missing. Where are they? I can't remember. What? One clock missing. And there isn't time. Get out of here. Save yourself. One clock. One clock. Hot. Bye. Bye, darling. That's what you think. You're right. We set sail now. Wait, what are you doing with my clock? Wait, I need it. outside. Be nice if you come over here and let me out. Yeah, well, uh, no key. Sir, oh, terrible, terrible. It wasn't the end of the world after all. A slight miscalculation, that's all. You wait and see. The end is coming yet. Tom, come over here. Well, uh, listen, Morgana, the thing is, when I, uh, ah! Yes, dear. Let me in, let me in. Let me in! Hit me, Thomas. Go ahead, hit me. I deserve it. What? Daddy, you're speaking. At last I've found someone worth speaking to. Go on, hit me. Okay. No, <laughs> no, no, I couldn't. Ooh. Then take Morgana. She's all yours, son. Oh, that's wonderful, Tom. We could be married. Together? You and me? And him? Daddy, get me out of here. I'm afraid that won't be possible, sir. You see, the key is... Uh, that was... Excuse me. Well, I don't see how you... Are... We could live together in this house, just the two of us, forever and ever. This house forever, with your father and, and Uncle Potiphar? Yes. Well, you see, there's this little girl in Texas. I, oh, no. Well, we're not actually engaged, but Mother was kind of hoping that... Just the two of us, Tom, alone in this house. Every night, Tom, darling. Every night, every night. Not on your life. I'm leaving. No! <laughs>
Wow, was that not magnificent? I could watch that movie a million times and still enjoy it the same every single time. Oh, I mean, William Castle was a genius when it comes to most of his films, including this one, I think. And, you know, we're going to be showing another William Castle film at the end of this month. Yes, we're going to be showing House on Haunted Hill with Bits of Price. And we're going to be doing that as an authentic spook show with a virtual seance. We're going to have a magic act. And I'm going to read everyone's mind who watches the show at the same time. That is going to be a Patreon-only event. Why? Because we're remastering it in HD with uh, surround sound. And it's going to have the spook show added to it. So it'll be a special show at the end of the month for Patreon only. Um, I hope that you did enjoy the show tonight. I hope it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't been over to my store, I have a new store. Yes, UlyssesCloset.online. Yes, UlyssesCloset.online. Go over there and take a look at some of the items. I have t-shirts. I have pillows. I have mugs. Just about anything you can think of. And we are the exclusive carrier of the Tennessee House of Horrors merchandise line. You don't know who Tennessee House of Horrors is? Tennessee House of Horrors is ran by Mr. Ricky Smith, who is also one of my producers. He is the South's number one haunted attraction reviewer. He goes to haunted attractions all over the Mid-South and some in the North and reviews haunted attractions on his page, Tennessee House of Horrors. It's on Facebook. Go over and look it up. I'll make sure that he uh, lets you join. Also, paparazzi jewelry. Go over and see Cameron on Facebook for your beautiful paparazzi jewelry. Five dollars for most everything. The most you'll ever pay is 25. Like this big necklace here. That was 25. These earrings were only five. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show tonight, as I said earlier. And I am so glad that you are my fans and my friends. And don't we have a lot of fun here? We do. And don't forget to be back next week. Next week, I'll be presenting The Screaming Skull in Terror Vision. Now, you'll have to watch it to see what that is. It is absolutely wonderful, and it's a gimmick of my own. Kind of following in the footsteps of William Castle. <laughs> oh, but as I say at the end of all of our shows, I'll be scaring you in all the old familiar houses. I'll scare you and your spouses half to death. <laughs> I'm you as you are. And I love each and every one of you. And I hope that God blesses you as much as you bless me every day. I love you. Good night.